Hi everyone, welcome back to Wesno's Tech News and Reviews. You know what they say, the best things in life are free. Well, these two smartwatches I got with me today are not free, but they are very, very budget. In fact, they are under 100 bucks each. So very budget smartwatches and they have one of the best optical heart rate sensors I've seen in comparison to many, many sport watches and smart watches, which cost double and triple these ones right here. So we've got the GTS 2 Mini as well as the Huawei Watch Fit. And today I'll be proving to you that these smart watches have amazing heart rate sensors. So I've actually tested them against Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Let's get into the test and comparison and I'll show you the details. If you are new to Wesno's tech news and reviews, we talk about the latest tech news. We do brutally honest reviews and share hacks and tricks along the way. I usually go on my evening runs, but the weather is absolutely crap in London. It's raining, it's windy, it's very cold, so it's just not pleasant. So what I thought I'd do is actually do a circuit workout at home. Okay, so the way we're going to structure this test and comparison is we're going to take the plots from the optical heart rate sensors on the smartwatches and we're going to put it against the plot of the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And we're going to kick off with the Huawei Watch Fit and then we'll get into the GTS 2 Mini from Amaz Fit. But before we get into the actual plots, I'll give you a short summary of what the watch is all about. Just to give you a reminder of what it offers, something in regards to design, display, and some of the main or the major features and functions. Right, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's kick off with the Huawei Watch Fit. So best things about this watch is that it's huge, 1.64 inch AMOLED display, and it's edge to edge. So you can see there's a slight curvature up top here and it's very slim at under 11 millimeters. Another thing, it's feather light, it's got a silicon strap, it's got a watch like clasp on top, it does have 24 hours continuous heart rate monitoring, it does your sleep tracking, so it does your deep, light and REM sleep and it gives you a sleep score as well as guidance and recommendations on how to improve your sleep quality. So it's got the continuous uh, stress monitoring and the most exciting thing about this watch is about a week ago Huawei have offered a version update to the Huawei watch fit so the only Huawei smartwatch in the whole Huawei smartwatch range and now it offers continuous SPO2 monitoring and we've actually done a test of that so you can go and check it out in one of our comparison playlists so the Huawei watch fit does have dual inbuilt GPS, which is amazing. It does make it a runner's watch. It's light, it's easy to use, you've got a huge screen, so you've got no problems with looking at your screen, reading off the values while you're exercising. It's also got 95 sport modes. That's more than enough any way you look at it. On top of that, there is a dedicated running app. So basically, there's 13 courses of varying intensities and it can take you from being a complete newbie in running to being quite advanced in running. On top of that, there is an app for workouts at home. And the best thing about that is that there are 48 exercises which are actually animated and the watch shows you how to perform those exercises. Anyway, let's now look at the two plots. So the heart rate monitor from the watch over the plot from the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. Okay, so we see that the Polar H10 ECG chest strap gave us an average heart rate of 136 beats per minute. The max heart rate was 164 beats per minute. Huawei Watch Fit did a fair job of tracing the Polar H10, but there are some gaps in the plots. Let's talk about the numbers first. So the average heart rate given by Huawei Fit was 130 beats per minute. That's a variance of six beats per minute less for the average and giving us a variance of 4.4%. Now the max was off by three beats per minute. So basically the peak was understated by 1.8%. Polar H10 actually records a smooth increase in heart rate while the Huawei Fit has a huge increase a couple of minutes later. So it sort of just rushes up there 
but there's no gradual increase as would be expected. Then also, just about the five minutes mark, we can see that the heart rate as registered by the Polar H10 has peaked and spiked three times. While at the same time, the Huawei Watch Fit actually registered a quite a deep troll. And we can see this huge gap in the map. So this is probably one of the major points where the Huawei Watch Fit underestimated the heart rate. And that gives us this huge variance in the average heart rate. As we go past the seven minute mark, the Huawei Watch Fit optical heart rate sensor does follow the Polo H10 heart rate quite closely. And we can see that the trolls are well registered as well as the peaks. Most of the problems do lie in the first five minutes or the first 25% of the workout. Now let's take a look at the GTS 2 Mini. So I think we know this smartwatch quite well because we've done quite a few comparisons, tests, reviews, etc. on this smartwatch. What can we say? It's got a very square face, so that's different from the Huawei Watch Fit. So if on the Fit it's very rectangular and longish, here it's almost square. It's also an AMOLED display. It's also just one button on the right hand side here, another watch-like clasp. It's also got dual inbuilt GPS. It doesn't have 95 sport modes, it's got 70 but 70 is also plenty. I doubt you will use all the sport modes on the actual watch. So such as the Pomodoro Tracker, such as the World Clock. It's also got a barometer and compass on this watch. It's got a lot of useful apps, such as you've got your sleep monitor, you've got your stress monitor, and very importantly, it's got the Pi metric, so the personal activity index. And the Pi metric is actually very cool because it's a single value metric, which tells you pretty much everything you need to know very quickly around your cardiovascular health. So as long as you keep your pi index above 100 points, and this is again just a rule of thumb, but as long as you keep it over 100, it would statistically mean that, when, that you're 25% less prone to getting heart disease. So now let's take a look at the plots from the optical heart rate sensor on the GTS2 Mini versus the Polar H10. We have seen this so many times where the Amazfit GTS 2 Mini shows amazing follow through by the optical heart rate sensor. It's just amazing. Just have a look at that plot. So from right from the start, from the word go, follows the Polar H10 heart rate. The GTS 2 Mini doesn't trace the Polar H10, but it's much closer. It does register an increase, although we don't see the spikes. And hence the average heart rate registered by GTS2 Mini is just two beats per minute off from Polar H10, giving us a variance of 1.5%. Then the max heart rate is actually off by just one beat per minute. And the peak is actually being overstated and we can clearly see that, that it happens in the last couple of minutes of the circuit workout. So once again, having a variance of 1.5% on the average heart rate and having a variance of 0.6% on the max heart rate, that's quite unbelievable considering this is an optical heart rate sensor and we know that optical heart rate sensors are usually quite lagged and not as accurate as the ECG chest straps. And we know that the Polar H10 is considered the most accurate chest strap in the world. So heart rate accuracy is good on both watches but the GTS2 Mini outperforms again. Thanks for watching. If you did like the review and comparison, then please drop us a like. And if you want to see more of the same, then please subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button below the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.